Basic Psychology Explanations for Forgetting Interference Theory Sarah, have you ever heard of interference theory in psychology? No, I haven't. What is it? Interference theory argues that forgetting occurs due to two memories competing and being affected by past memories or possible future learning. How does it work? The more similar the two memories are, the more interference it causes as the two memories become confused with one another. Two types of interference are proposed to occur, proactive interference and retroactive interference. What's proactive interference? Proactive interference occurs forward in time and with the coding of new memories being interfered with due to past similar memories. For example, an old mobile number is recalled when trying to recall the new mobile phone number. Keppel and Underwood, 1962, demonstrated proactive interference. What's retroactive interference? Retroactive interference occurs backwards in time when the coding of new information disrupts previously stored information. For example, you learn your new mobile number but are unable to remember your old one. Sarasso, 1967, suggested one possible explanation for retroactive interference was there was no actual loss of information, but merely the wrong information was accessed as it had been moved. Muller, 1900, identified retroactive interference through a study, where participants tasked with learning a list of syllables are given an intervening task between exposure to the syllables and recall. Interference Theory Evaluation Interference theory explains how we forget information when similar or competing information interferes with our ability to remember it. For example, if you try to remember two lists of similar words, you might get confused and forget some of them. That makes sense. Is there any research to support this theory? Yes, MacDonald et al., 1931 conducted a study where participants were given two lists of adjectives to remember. Recall was poorest when the second list was a list of synonyms of the first list, supporting the case for confusion to occur between the two memories as interference theory states. Interesting. Are there any weaknesses to this theory? One major weakness is that the interference effects are more evident in laboratory-based settings using various memory-based tasks. Therefore, it makes it difficult to generalize the findings externally beyond the laboratory settings, or understand exactly how much day-to-day -day forgetting can be credited to interference or even forgetting in general. Also, forgetting due to similarities doesn't happen that often either suggesting it is only one part of a bigger explanation and oversimplified. I see. Are there any real-world applications for this theory? Yes, understanding how interference works can offer advertisers real-world applications for marketing campaigns as they attempt to build brands. Danaher, 2008, found that when people were exposed to adverts from competing brands within a short time frame, participants struggled to recognize the brands or their message. By ensuring adverts are spaced significantly far apart from the airing of rival brands or by repeating more on one day, rather than over the week with rival brands, this can help avoid dilution of adverts. Retrieval failure Retrieval failure is when we forget something because we can't access the memory due to insufficient clues or cues to aid recall. It's not that the memory is unavailable, but we can't find it without the right cues. That's interesting. So, what kind of cues are we talking about? Think of it like a labeling system on a filing system. The cues act as markers to aid recall, and without these, the mind is unable to locate the correct memory. The effectiveness of a cue depends on the number of items associated with it, with fewer items leading to a more effective cue. I see. What did Tolving say about this? Tolving called this the encoding specificity principle where recollection is affected if the context of recall is different from what it was when the memory was coded. Memory recall is most effective when information present at the time of encoding is available during retrieval. That makes sense. So, what are the two main types of cue-dependent forgetting? The two main types are context-dependent failure and state-dependent failure. 
Context-dependent failure relies on external environmental retrieval cues being similar to when the information was encoded to aid recall. State-dependent failure would occur when the internal state of the person is different from when the information was encoded. Can you give me an example of context-dependent failure? Sure. Being in the same room where you learned the answers to a test and then taking the test in this room would result in greater recall than being in a different room. Environmental context such as being at a particular place can trigger retrieval, as can particular sights or sounds if they are experienced strongly enough during encoding. That's fascinating. Do you have an example of state-dependent failure? Yes, feeling a different emotion while trying to remember something can result in state-dependent failure. For example, trying to recall information when you were happy while you are feeling sad. Overton's study found that participants struggled with recall more when trying to retrieve the information in a state that is different from the time of encoding. Retrieval Failure Evaluation Retrieval failure happens when we are unable to recall information that we have previously learned. Cue-dependent forgetting occurs when we are unable to recall information because we lack the necessary cues or prompts to retrieve it from memory. Why is this important to understand? Understanding how cues affect recall can help us develop ways to improve memory for the benefit of society. For example, research into retrieval failure and cue-dependent forgetting has real-world application, particularly in the search for missing people and reconstructing the last known whereabouts. That's interesting. Can you give me an example? Sure. In 2001, a reconstruction of Danielle Jones' last known whereabouts prompted witnesses to recall her arguing with a man, which later led to the conviction of her uncle through witness testimony. This has also helped in cognitive interviews to help people recall information for witness testimonies. Wow, that's impressive. What are some of the theories of retrieval failure? There are several theories, including the encoding specificity principle, state-dependent failure, and cue-dependent learning. However, some of these theories have limitations and ethical concerns. For example, research into state-dependent failure such as Overton's 1972 study raises ethical concerns, as it encourages people to become drunk and under the influence of substances, which can lead to injury or even death even by accident. I see. So, what are some of the criticisms of these theories? Baddeley, 1997, criticized the encoding specificity principle as impossible to test and verify for certain, making it unscientific. Similarly, similarly, Baddeley's 1975 study found supporting evidence for cue-dependent learning and how context cues aided retrieval.